Welcome to another episode of Good Bogey Golf, where we dive into the stories that shape the greens and fairways of the golf world. Today, we're turning the spotlight on a tale of redemption, rivalry, and reflection. The story of Grayson Murray's remarkable turnaround, partially thanks to none other than Rory McIlroy. Now, if you don't remember how this happened, we've got you covered. It all started with a heated exchange between the two players that took place during a player's meeting, shaking the golf community. But it also lit a fire under Murray's cheeks that propelled his play to another level. Today, we're gonna peel back the layers of this drama, exploring how Murray turned his game around, and most importantly, answer the burning question of what happened to Rory. To better understand, we need the details. Luckily for us, they were all over the web after that controversial meeting. Picture this, a room full of golf's finest, gathered for what was supposed to be a routine players meeting. Yet, it was anything but routine. In one corner, you have Grayson Murray, known more for stirring the pot than for his swings. And in the other, Rory McIlroy, the guy who's as cool as a cucumber on and off the green. But what made this meeting special was not either of those two players. It was Jay Monahan, the PGA commissioner. In that meeting, the tension was palpable after Monahan delivered a verbal sucker punch. After a year of talking trash about Liv and their backers, Monahan made a surprise deal to partner with Liv Golf. At the time, many players were trying to side with the PGA to defend its status as the best golf league in the world. They wanted nothing to do with Liv. So to no one's surprise, there was some backlash, one of which came from Grayson Murray. He apparently shouted across the room for Monaghan to resign from his position as the PGA commissioner saying, we don't trust you, Jay, you lied to our face. But Rory, ever the smooth operator, hit back with a line that's now legendary. Just play better, Grayson. That's it, four words, simple, yet they hit like a ton of bricks. Appalled by Rory's response, Murray told him to F off. It was later revealed that cooler heads prevailed after the meeting, but the damage was done. He raised legitimate concerns with PJ leadership, and the response he got was basically, shut up and get better. Interestingly, McElroy's just play better taunt didn't necessarily go over well with other players on the tour also. Many felt the same shock as Murray, and questions of trust in Monaghan and his handling of the PGA Tour saga still linger today. So what did Murray go on to do? Did he sulk away? Nope. He took those words and turned them into fuel, igniting a fire in his game that had been missing for way too long. Since that fiery exchange, Murray's been swinging his clubs like a man on a mission. His drives, longer and straighter. His putts, like he's got GPS chips in the ball. It's been a transformation that's got everyone talking. Let's roll out some numbers to paint the picture. But first, smash that subscribe button and hit the like if you're enjoying this video so far. Okay, back to the stats. Murray's racked up five top 10 finishes, including two wins in his tournament since. He posted a 16 under at the John Deere and placed six. Then he posted an 18 under at the Barbasol Championship, securing him seventh. Then late in the year on the Corn Ferry tournaments, he secured a win at Simmons Bank Open, scoring another 17 under. He carried this momentum over into the 2024 season and posted another 17 under in the Sony Open in Hawaii. He made the final shot to clinch the title in a three-way playoff round with a jaw-dropping 39-foot putt. It was the stuff of legend. Murray's been playing like a man who's got something to prove, not just to the world, but to himself. And there is more to it. Remember Murray's heartfelt words after his big win? A lot of hard work pays off, he said, standing on the green a champion reborn. It's not easy, you know. I wanted to give up a lot of times, give up on myself, give up on the game of golf, give up on life at times. Murray's struggles aren't a secret. They've been out there for the world to see. Cast your mind back three years ago, right here in the same city where he clinched the Sony Open. Murray found himself in a bit of a pickle at a hotel bar, an incident that landed him on probation with the PGA Tour and it didn't stop there. He became known for his alcohol-fueled rants on social media, taking jabs at the tour and other players. Then, in the fall of 2022, things took a darker turn when he crashed his scooter into oncoming traffic. It was a wake-up call, a moment that screamed for change. In a last-ditch effort to turn his life around, Murray checked into rehab. It was a month that changed everything. He's been sober for eight months now, and it shows not just in his game, but in his whole demeanor. And Rory, well, 
He's likely been watching all of this, probably with a mix of surprise and a little bit of, I told you so. While his comment was not the greatest, many pros agree that it was meant wholeheartedly from one pro to another. Now, let's zoom out a bit and look at the bigger picture, the PGA Tour, a place where champions are made and sometimes where the underdogs feel left in the dust. This is where our story takes an interesting turn, highlighting two very different sides of the same coin. On one side, you've got Grayson Murray, kind of like the unsung hero of the PGA Tour. He's the guy who represents the players who often feel overlooked, especially with all the drama surrounding the PGA live fight. Think about it, more events with big money for the top dogs, but what about the guys at the back of the pack? For them, it's like trying to climb a mountain with no peak in sight. Murray's outburst at McElroy, that wasn't just a random rant. It was the voice of frustration, a cry from a player feeling sidelined by the very organization that he's a part of. Then there's Rory McElroy, the face of the PGA Tour during its tug of war with the PIF's league. Rory's been the martyr, the guy putting it all on the line while the tour has been duking it out with Live Golf. But here's the twist. Rory recently realized he's been more of a sacrificial lamb than a celebrated hero. Stepping down from his player director position, he started singing a different tune, talking about making peace with Live Golf and even pushing for John Rahm's inclusion in the Ryder Cup despite Rahm's leap to live. He tweeted, I was maybe a little judgmental of the guys who went to Live Golf at the start, and I think it was a bit of a mistake on my part because I now realize that not everyone is in my position or in Tiger Woods' position. We all turn professional to make a living playing the sport that we do. And I think that's what I realized over the last two years. I can't judge people for making that decision. So if I regret anything, it was probably being too judgmental at the start. I wouldn't say I've lost the fight against Liv, but I've just accepted the fact that this is a part of our sport now. McElroy's change of stance was a breath of fresh air, honest and raw. Even Phil's tweet response to it was uncharacteristic. Phil tweeted, this quote and the many others made today by Rory probably weren't easy to say. Let's not use this as an opportunity to pile on. Rather, it's time for me and others to let go of our hostilities and work towards a positive future. Rom's signing is turning into a bridge to bring both sides together. While Rory's struggles are a world apart from the struggles of players like Murray, who rely on the tour's whims for their bread and butter, it still shows both players have undergone a significant shift one on the fairway and the other in the bureaucratic land of golf. And that's the beauty of it all, the unpredictability of sport. It's a world where the McElroys don't always take home the trophy and the Graysons aren't always left holding the bag. Six months after their feud, the tables have turned and now everyone's eyes are on what's next. What's this new framework going to look like? How will it reshape the landscape of golf? We'll find out soon enough. And that, my friends, wraps up another round here at Good Bogey Golf. Before you scoot off to your next tea time, remember, if you've enjoyed this quick dive into the greens and bunkers of golf's greatest dramas, why not give that like button a good whack? Think of it as your way of chipping a little off Jay Monahan's pile, all in good fun, of course. And hey, don't forget to smash that subscribe button like you're driving down the 18th fairway with the wind at your back. Keep swinging, keep watching, and remember, in the game of golf, just like in life, the next shot could change everything.